they had orders to take the crossing. It was a fierce battle close to Russia's positions. At that moment, we were told a tank was coming. Cunning and ingenuity under heavy enemy fire. He ran out there alone. How Ukrainian scouts smoked out the enemy from under the bridge. You will see this epic footage and comments from the participants of this incredible assault. This footage was taken on the outskirts of the occupied Soldar, a town located just 16 kilometers from Bakhmut. The soldiers of the 30th separate mechanized brigade are approaching the enemy positions almost closely. Why the audacity? These soldiers were given an extremely difficult task to capture the first line of defense on this section of the front and, accordingly, to drive the Russians out of their well-fortified positions. The invaders at the time controlled an important road leading to one of the bridges. Nearby, one by one, they set up two strongholds. The first one is right here, near the road in a small landing, and then the other one is right under the bridge. And this is the footage of the beginning of the assault. First, the infantry moves forward to seize the first position, in the same wooded area by tank landing close to the Russians. After the paratroopers landed, a tank took over. Smoke and dust cover the battlefield for several minutes. Seeing such a picture, one of the orcs tries to run away. But realizing that it was useless, he turned on his acting skills and pretended to be dead. It won't help him. The Ukrainian infantry wasted no time in quickly gaining a foothold on the first line of Russian positions. But in fact, this is only half the task. The next step is a much more difficult target, a stronghold under the bridge. Scouts of the 30th Brigade go to assault. These are two of them. On the left is 32-year-old Stanislav from Poltava region. Next to him is a very young 22-year-old from Sumy Vladislav, a real hero of that battle. They dug many tunnels there. One of them, more than 10 meters long, came out here. It was decided that we would drive up to their positions, unexpectedly on vehicles. And then we had to storm about 100 meters. We rushed out of the armor and then moved forward in a group, in combat order, to their first positions. Their first enemy position was in a small forest belt in the Birches. And the second, well fortified, was under a bridge. The scouts moved forward to assault the enemy positions in an infantry fighting vehicle. The tank that helped to storm the first position is on its way to reload, and therefore the guys are left without the cover of heavy armor and without large caliber support for some time. The occupiers are well prepared for defense. The reinforced concrete bridge is a solid structure in itself, but they turned it into a real fortress. They had everything they needed to stay there for a long time, generators and lots of ammunition. They also had a well-developed tunnel system there, under the road and everywhere. This fortress was covered by an enemy machine gun. It was defending the bridge, and the surrounding area was under constant enemy artillery fire. Ukrainian soldiers could not immediately approach the bridge. After about five to ten minutes, the enemy began to fire very strongly. Basically, they shot the entire territory. And from the moment we approached the bridge to storm it, artillery fire started to hit us. They fired both AGS and mortars. This assault seemed to be due, but at that time a tank returned to help the fighters. We were ordered to pull back a little bit to regroup. And just at that moment, we were told a bear was coming. A bear is what we call a tank. We were a bit shocked at first because we didn't know if it was ours or not. <laughs> but everything quickly became clear when he drove up and started shooting at the enemies. And that's when the Russians started to panic and become a mess. In this drone footage, you can see one of them radioing for help. And another, most likely out of desperation, even dares to take a smoke break. But the tankers quickly drive these rats back underground. From the left flank begins the methodical destruction of all enemy fortifications. And this, according to the scouts, was one of the turning points of that battle. Intense tank fire allowed Ukrainian soldiers to approach the bridge. If there was no tank, what would happen? 
It would have been very hard. The tank scared them a lot. Hitting a machine gun point and they panic. But the battlefield is still under Russian crossfire. The occupiers are covering the bridge from both sides. Firing points are 400 meters away on the left flank and behind the bridge. In addition, the enemy's anti-tank missile system is starting to work on the tank. The tank crew is forced to move away from the bridge. Now the scouts are again left alone and without cover, which is extremely dangerous. But in these conditions, one of the fighters decides to do the impossible. There, further away, about 400 meters away, were other enemy positions. Straight ahead and to the right, they had machine gun crews and AGS crews concentrated there. And Vlad, risking his life, ran out there alone. He took a great risk when he opened fire on them with an assault rifle and two grenades. Vladislav walks onto the bridge, practically under enemy fire, and plants the explosives. In a few seconds, a powerful explosion occurs. This is how the stormtroopers try to reach the invaders, punching holes in the bridge literally over the heads of the Russians. They had a tunnel there that was more than 10 meters long, and there were also tunnels in the depth. Ukrainian soldiers realized that conventional methods of assault would not have worked here, so you couldn't get them with ordinary grenades? No, we used high explosive charges to punch holes in the bridge over their dugouts, and then we could throw grenades in. You saw how we made a big hole with the explosives, but we were a little unlucky. Later we found out that we missed by half a meter. The explosion hit the ground and not the dugout. They will see how deeply underground the Russians have burrowed, only after the assault. They could have been blown up only by some kind of air bomb, uh, FAB 500 for example. But the fighters' ingenuity and bravery took its toll. Again and again, Vlad climbs the bridge. Oh yes, it's me going up there again. After the tank shots, there were holes where I threw the grenades. Meanwhile, his comrades are throwing grenades at one of the emergency exits near the bridge. The Russians cling tightly to their positions, and the fierce fighting continued for several hours. But then, after the assault, at night, those who were lucky enough to survive simply ran away. We inflicted heavy losses on them. The orcs realized that they were finished and retreated. And that's when our neighboring units came to these positions. They told us that there were more than 10 enemy corpses. Unfortunately, there were losses on the Ukrainian side. Vlad himself almost died at the end of the assault when a mine exploded near the stormtroopers. However, the boys accomplished their task. Soon, in one of the next battles, Stanislav is wounded. Now he's in the hospital. And the fearless Vladislav Boatarenko was killed in the next battle. This interview was his last. During it, the scout smiled shyly only once when he was called a hero. But I'm not a hero. It's just that when I'm on the front line, all my instincts kink in and I do everything automatic. Rest in peace, hero. Your exploits and courage will be remembered forever. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.